Hey, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. This is Deanna. Today we are talking about finishing our rugs. I have gotten this morning two uh, messages about doing a video on finishing rugs. So I think today is the day to do a video on finishing rugs. And I am not giving you the complete catalog of ways to finish rugs. I'm going to give you the three easiest and most common ways for a beginner to finish a rug and to have it look beautiful. Uh, there are other ways, and I'll mention some of those. There are varieties of ways. There are combinations of ways. Um, some people finish their rug uh, the way that we're going to finish a rug and then add rows of braiding around. That's a beautiful way to finish your rug, and we'll do that in another video. But we are doing basic ways to finish rugs in this video. Another hot day. I'm sweating. Um, so the ways that I'm going to show you are literally folding back and sewing, um, using cording and covering the cording with a whip stitch so yarn you could also do it with wool strips but we're doing it with yarn it looks i think a little bit neater um, or a sort of hybrid of those two which is to use the bias tape but then to cover that with whip stitching so those are the three simple ways that i would recommend for a beginner to finish a rug and to start this video i want to look at some antique rugs that i have show examples of these ways having been done in the past and the pros and cons of both as they happen over time. So these are old rugs right here, right? These are quite old, these are very old. Um, and let's start with this one. These have all been finished in different ways and I can't throw rugs out um, and I love them all so I will find a way in the future to either save them or turn them into a footstool or something. But with this first rug, you can see that, oh goodness, where is the finishing? There doesn't appear to be a finishing. And as a result, right, this is the other side of the rug. Now, this is over the course of many years, and who knows, this rug could have been used at the gate of a circus, and elephants could have, you know, um, stampeded over it uh, for decades. Who knows? This might be general wear and tear. This might be a combination of, of water and rot because this is a burlap base. But regardless, this rug clearly doesn't have a very visible finish. And the way that this rug was finished, and this is a viable way to finish a rug, it's not one of the ways I'm showing you right now, but it is a quick way to finish a rug that is a wall hanging and is not going to be used underfoot because it is not durable. The way is this. This is what happened with this one. When this person was finishing their seam, they literally, when they were hooking this, they literally folded the edge of it down and hooked through two layers from the front. So they folded their pattern over, trimmed it right down, and hooked through two layers. So you have got no tape, no binding. You have got just a hint of them having finished it that way, going through one tiny extra layer all the way around. That is a good way to finish something that you want to use for the wall because, as you can see, it's invisible. You literally fold down a small piece of the edge, not too much, and you hide the entire thing by hooking through both layers, right? Both layers, one loop, both layers, hooking through both. So that in terms of the aesthetic looks great if you can picture this 100 years ago, but in terms of durability, less great. So we'll get this one out of the mix. This is a beautiful rug, by the way. The center is never, this is the back. Look at those nice colors. Um, beautiful rug, but this was not meant to last on the floor underfoot. So now here's another one um, with a similar finish. It's probably the same finish because as you can see with this one, you can actually see the burlap folded over on the edges, right? So same thing. This was a fast finish. Someone's even patched this one at one time. There's been a lot of love and care here, but over the years, um, we've actually gotten holes and um, a lot of damage, but all the same, beautiful colors, beautiful rug. Another example of a very fast finish, just folding over and hooking through both layers. I'm definitely going to use that for something. Don't think that I'm going to let these guys perish. I would never do that. This one, a similar age. This is the back. Gorgeous, right? Um, and as you can see, someone used the bias tape to finish the edges. This is bias tape. We're going to talk more about this in a minute. Um, bias tape is like, uh, bias tape when you're sewing is like a diagonal stretchy tape and you can make it with a bias maker. This is what I would call twill tape, but I more often hear it referred to as bias. 
it's not really biased because it's not cut on any diagonal, but let's just call it bias as a placeholder because that seems to be the standard. So this comes in many, many, many colors. Of course, you could dye it too. It's cotton. Um, black, natural. You either would choose it to become invisible, to blend in to the back of your rug so it doesn't stand out on the edges underneath. Uh, or if you're doing what's called the, the Eaton style, the Doris Eaton style, and you intend for your edges to show like this. This is not her style. Hers is much craftier than this, but this is a much older rug than Doris Eaton. Um, if you were doing a style along those lines where you intended the twill to show, you would choose a color of twill that is complementary um, to your rug, either contrast that complements or matches, one or the other, but something that goes. So we'll talk more about this tape in a little while. But as you can see, this rug is finished with tape. So what somebody did was sew it to one edge, right? They probably did this like you're sewing. They probably sewed it under here and then folded it over and sewed it on the back. You can see where they sewed it on the back. It's less fantastic. I mean, it's, it's again, a bit of repair, but you can see the running sort of whip stitch, very loose, very fast on the back. On this area, they're grabbing the backs of loops uh, in this area right over the repair but they're literally wrapping this tape around the edge of this. You could even do it like that and hide. It comes in different widths to the tape, right? This is a much thinner tape. So depending on the thickness of your rug and what you've used to hook it, um, you might be looking at those kinds of options, not just color, but width. So this is the kind of rug that has tape sewn around the edges and it's meant to show. Okay, so there's two kinds. The trim, like the tape trim that's meant to show and not meant to show, totally different. Same material, almost the same technique, but totally different. This is meant to show, and as you can see, you know, the rug is not in incredible condition. It's got lots of holes coming through. Um, it's had a lot of damage, but the one thing that's held up is the edge. Because as you can imagine, when you are walking on a rug, um, if you're like me, you're constantly stepping on the edge of it, tripping on the edge of it, catching something on the edge of it, and the edge is the most vulnerable. So when you have something that's wrapped around the edge, protecting it, for example, tape or whip stitch, which is gonna be something that you watch me do later in this video, then you are protecting the edge. If your stuff is going up on walls or on tables, you don't need to worry about that. That's a wear and tear problem. That's unique and specific to something that goes on the floor and your feet are on that take heavy traffic. This is a good finish for that. This has lasted a long time, right? So this is a tape finished rug where the tape was meant to show. Now this one, beautiful rug. One of the ladies in our group gave this to me. I absolutely love this. God, that's so pretty. Um, this is a rug where the tape was not meant to show. So they have wrapped the tape around the back and stitched it down. And I will show you how you do this. This is a real easy finish. The thing with this finish, and you can see is a te testament to the way that the rug has sort of worn. Um, if you can see the sides and the edges. It hasn't done super well, right? There's a lot of loss. So again, over time, people step on the edge. The edge is very vulnerable. It's not protected by anything. It looks great because your color and your, your rug itself comes right to the edge. There's nothing else. There's no border. There's nothing to frame it. It sustains its own shape. It's the way it's meant to be, but on the floor, it's super vulnerable. So this was done and it's so old that the um, tape that had the info on it is gone too. But this was done by sewing the tape on, wrapping it around, was on the front of the design wrapping it around completely not half and half like the last rug not half and half like this completely wrapping it around and then stitching it down right i'm going to come right back to that idea so we have seen no sort of finish where you're just folding the edges of your pattern under and hooking through both layers most vulnerable totally invisible a little tricky and then we're seeing the two tape finishes, which are meant to show it, didn't mean to show it, hidden. This one's hidden. And let's see what else we've got. This is another one 
Um, the third category is not in the antique pile because you don't get a lot of rugs with the third finish, but I'm going to show you that too. This is another one, gorgeous, where again, the tape was wrapped around and it looks beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, the tape is in perfect condition, but the rug is not. It's sustained a lot of damage. Okay. So having looked at these rugs, you can see already, it's like a Russian nesting doll. There's options within options. So if you are a person who is going to put tape on yours and you do not want it to show, the best thing for you to do will be to sew the edge around your pattern first. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to sh and then I'm going to cut the video and show you a clip of me doing it so you can actually see me doing it. So let me show you what it looks like first. When you know that you want your finish to be tape that is not meant to show, do yourself a favor and either hand stitch or machine stitch your tape right around the edge, okay? Right around the edge, right against the line. This black line is my border and I'm folding as I go. I'm folding over as I go. That's not good, you can't see that. Like this on the corners, right? Just like that on the corners. Right the way around, okay? I'm gonna pause here because I'm gonna show you a vi video of me actually sewing this on as I did two minutes ago. So you can see here, I've got this piece in an example of the stitching of the bias border, the twill border already being on it. So I've already, I've started down here. This is one of the new Hall Halloween patterns I'm gonna start working on. This is one of the ones I just did the other day. Um, I'm gonna do a close up, but you can see down here, if I can get you down there. I started in the bottom left. Now, is it a hard and fast rule to start in the bottom left? No. If you go to a, some rug hooking stores, are people going to tell you absolutely always need to start on the bottom left? Yes, probably, most likely. Nothing is a hard and fast rule. But if you think about how your eye sees things, the least interesting or attractive part of any sort of shape for most people is the bottom left because you're reading top to right. So if you're looking at the bottom left, that will probably be the, the place that you're least likely to tune into. That's where the two pieces of tape will merge. So I've got it stitched around here and you can see on the corners, I'm turning it out. I'm going to show you that on the machine now and I'm going to sew with you the end of this. Let's make sure the phone is going to do its thing. Where's my needle? There it is. We're going to sew the edge of this together. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm stitching. I've got my needle right, right along that edge. I'm just going to keep going straight down. The tape is right up to the edge of my border, right? It's right there on the edge. As I go, I'm not much of a pre-pinner because I stick myself so much. I move the pin down a little bit and I'm just going right along that edge. Whoop, that was close. I'm gonna move the pin down a little bit. We're gonna come to the corner. I always leave the needle in when I'm doing turns and things. So I'm leaving this here for the moment and then I'm gonna show you how I just flip this corner. All right. And then I'm gonna pin this again. You don't have to do it this way. The thing is when you flip it this way, it makes for a flat corner. It doesn't make any difference to the finishing of it, but it makes for a flat corner. Whereas if you just force it around uh, sunny side up all the way, uh, you will have a stand up piece of tape. And there's no problem with having a stand up piece of tape, but this is a flat piece of tape and this is gonna work the same way in the end. So I'm gonna come right to the corner right over the edge of that tape. And I'm ready to come shooting down my last side. Put some more pins in just to be sure. Now this is something you could do by hand. You know, for people that say I'm not, uh, I'm not a sewer. Um, no, not a lot of people are sewers. I have a degree in sewing and I still don't feel like I'm a sewer. But sewing is obviously faster on the machine. But this is certainly something you can hand do. There's no uh, drawback to doing it by hand at all. You know, 
the machine stitches are more uniform uh, and thus sometimes more secure, but you can do this by hand, you'll get the same thing. Now, I'm going to put the needle in for a minute. I'm coming to the end. You can see this is where my pieces are going to overlap, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra. I was hooked up to the tape all that time, so I just separated from the IV system here. And I'm going to come right to the edge, but I'm going to fold this under because when I wrap this, I don't want the edge, and I can press this later, I don't want the edge sticking out raw edges all willy-nilly. I'm going to fold it under so it looks clean. And this is going to be my last bit. Just back stitching, forward stitching. And that's going to be that. I'm going to cut loose from here. Now I have just successfully ba -ba -da, gotten my tape on here. Let me get rid of this machine. It's not going to do anything but cause us grief. Get rid of that. I'm going to unplug it and put it across the roof. There we go. So now I've got this ready. If you have the time and the foresight and you are able to do this in advance, get your tape stitched around your edges. I am now ready to go. Uh, I will put this in relation to, to finishing it in a minute. But this is what you see a lot of people doing pre stitching the border on and I will in the end hook right to the edge. I will hook that very last row of everything and then I'll be turning it under and finishing it in one of the ways that we're talking about and it'll be absolute perfection. The, the hooking will go right up to the edge. I know my stitching was right along the line and I know my lines were straight. So we're going to put this into uh, the mix in just a second showing you some other techniques as well. Now with the rugs that I intend to finish, I'm going to finish some of these little guys that I do for the monthly clubs. I'm going to choose which ones I'm going to finish. Um, I've got a couple more out here. But I'm going to look at my tape situation. You know I have the dark and the light tape right here. And I'm going to look at my whip stitch situation with the, uh, these are a bunch of things that I dyed. Um, the really thick, bulky, and super bulky, depending on how thick your rug is, is fantastic for finishing the edges. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these and choose which finish I want for them. Let's see, put this one in the mix too. So um, I'm going to do a few different finishes. I think, I think on this one, I'm going to show you a finish where you're just going to fold this over and I'm going to trim it. And then you're going to fold it back. And again, it's going to be trimmed and I'm just going to sew it down to the loops. Okay, so I will have a visible border. It's not like hooking through both layers. I think I'm going to finish that one that way. So that's to be continued. And then I think I'm going to do, let's see, just so you know, I dyed these, right? These are all uh, heavy, bulky weight uh, wools that I dyed for finishing. But there's also these kinds of things, Minerva, um, a lot of the other, the older brands, the vintage brands, you find these at thrift stores or church shops and stuff, vivid colors, real thick. Um, you can use these to finish too. That's great to finish too. So I think that one we're going to do fold over. And so on one of these, I want to show you whip stitch. So why don't we do, um, let's see, I try to make things that match and it becomes tricky. I think we should do, let's do this one. This is this month's. I'm going to finish this with a whip stitch. Let's do that. And then it just becomes what color? So let's see, it's personal choice. That kind of matches the flag. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'm gonna do that. So let's do that one with a whip stitch and cord. That was the first time I think I said cord, so we'll get back into that. And let's do one another way. Let's do one that has twill and, you know what, I'm gonna do all four. Let's do this one twill. I'm gonna put this one twill and we're gonna fold it over to finish. And then I'm gonna do this one twill and then using cord over. So we're gonna show four different techniques here. So let's get started. So what I'm doing here is I'm finishing this guy with a kind of finish that I just mentioned where I'm literally folding back and sewing. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. I have trimmed it down a bit, right? This is me trimming it down a bit. 
okay so I don't have too much excess and then I trim the corners down something like this so there's not too much excess there now if you were a normal person you'd probably I don't know do a zigzag stitch or try to finish that I'm immediately going to fold it and secure it with with top stitching I'm going to be going over it with stitches so that's the reason I'm not overly concerned about uh, the destiny of that edge because I know I'm going to be addressing it like in the next 30 seconds so um, what I've done here is I have folded and pressed like this pushing it over as I go right pushing it over as I go there's the front so that I know you see all the loops standing up there I'm pushing it over as I go and I've got my needle and thread you can use any kind of a needle I like to use these chenille needles they, they have a huge wide head and they're sharp unlike tapestry needles because when I'm sewing the back of this I'm catching pieces on the wool like this I'm catching the back of my loops and I'm doing kind of a running whip like this catching the back of a loop be careful with your choices and I'm going to run straight across this way So I've got this folded under, tucked in, I've pressed it, and I'm literally just running across, grabbing a little bit of the back of the loops, running across this way, securing it as I go. You are going to see on the back this backing of linen because it's there and I haven't attempted to hide it. But what you're not going to see is the linen on the front on the front it's going to look perfect right it's exact and i'm going to put it on pause well you know what let me just run along here and then i'll bring you to the corner with me you don't have to worry about how many how many loops do i go before i dig in with the needle again just do what makes sense make sure it seems secure make sure you've got a good purchase on the backing so that you're not letting it slip forward you don't want the edges to show you want the edges of your loops to hide this and I did a one strand. You can do two strand. This is like upholstery, uh, heavyweight thread. There's also rug making thread. It's all the same. Heavyweight thread is great. Don't use regular thread. It's it's too hard to deal with, um, and it's going to um, probably snap anyway if you if you pull it real hard. So I like the I like the thicker thread. And it's not with this finish. It's not going to show. So it doesn't matter if you've got an exact match or not. Don't go to Joann's and spend eight dollars for six different spools of thread. Um, hoping to get the right match. This is the back and it doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to be coming to the corner, which is what I want to show you. I want to be sure you're in the video here. Just running across with the edge. I've got the iron off because it's about 120 degrees in this room. I should have done this a little sooner. Watch, watch me cocking this up. You know what? I forgot to clip this corner. I did it off camera. So let me do something naughty. Don't you do this. Do as I say, not as I do, right? I say that to the kids all the time. So let me just get rid of that. And then you have to know, especially if you're a sewer, whenever you're fooling, let me plug, plug, plug the iron back in. Whenever you're fooling with corners on anything, quilts, clothing, anything, uh, it's fiddly and it's going to give you a hard time. I just put the iron on so I can start pressing this back and I'm going to be folding this forward this is the fiddly part gonna get this hidden in here and hidden in there I went one stitch too many so I'm trying to pull back on that it's fiddly I'm not gonna to lie to you it's fiddly I'm looking for this if you can see that let me just tack it into place and then I'll press it. You can tack it this way too. You want a nice closed corner. I'm gonna show you this in a second. Let me just pull on that, there we go. I'm gonna make that even more secure, but I've made a nice closed corner there and I'm gonna press that. This corner I did clip, woohoo! So I'm gonna to come to here and press, fold and press. I'm gonna to come to here, fold it in a bit, push it over and then press try not to get too much of your little fraying edges there i'm going to come across with my iron and press this until so it's perfect 
right? And then I'm going to whip stitch that too. I'm going to come, not whip stitching, I'm going to do running stitch right across that too. So I'm going to turn you off for a minute while I come to this corner. But this is what you're going to want to do. Fold your ends under so the corner's nice and flat. Press it to make sure that your loops are perfect, that your ends are hidden. This is what you're looking for, something that looks like that. And you're just going to do your sewing right across to the corners, which are going to be the hardest part, right back around the other corners. And your whole thing is going to work this way. Okay, I'm going to put you on pause for just a second. I'm just going to show you the very, very beginning of this. I just re-knotted my thread right here and I'm pulling it under. And then because I don't really need the two ply, I just cut it. And this is for truly beginning sewers and pull it a little bit. So I've got one, uh, one thread going and I'm just going to cruise across. You can see my corner that I forgot didn't really make any difference. It's still really sharp and hidden. It worked out fine. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the whole rug this way. I'm just showing you the principle of folding it over, ironing it to give it a nice, flat, uh, stiff sort of line. And you can see that when you are done with this finish, it really, it comes right to the edge, right? It comes right to the edge. There's, there's nothing extra. You wouldn't want to put this on the floor because your edges would be vulnerable. But doing it this way is, I think pretty much anybody can do this and don't say, don't say except me. Um, just you're trimming it down, you're folding it under, you're pressing it, you are turning the corners in, you're getting a good corner line, you're pressing it, you're fold, you can even fold as you go. You can always press later, right? Right across the edges, the whole thing. And then you're gonna be pressing it under and you're done, right? The whole back is gonna look like these two lines that I just did. And the front is gonna look like this, really crisp, okay? So that is one That is one of the finishes that we're gonna talk about. That is the finish that I'm gonna call um, just folding under and sewing behind. Super superficial, huh? What's going on with this camera? Uh, it's an easy one. And uh, again, it's good if you have something that is not going to go on the floor. So we're gonna move on to our next finish. So this next finish is going to be using the tape and I'm going to be folding it under like the antique rugs that we saw and it is not to show, okay? It's not wrapping around like that one old older rug. Um, it's going to be hidden by tucking it underneath. But unlike this finish, right, I haven't used any tape. I've just folded the edges down, tucked them under and sewn them down. This finish is going to be similar, except I'm adding the strength of a piece of uh, bias tape to it. So I didn't, I didn't do these in advanced, advanced. So I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to blast the fan on my body while I start hand sewing right against here, right along the edge of this one, so that I can show you that finish next. I just want to show you as I go around this corner so that there's no secrets and surprises and there's no mysteries. I'm just stitching a running stitch along here quite close to the edge. Right. And when I get to the edge, I'm just going to turn it like this. And keep going. I'm going to stitch right over what I just did back up and I'm just getting that running stitch right up again the, against those loops right no magic here I'm gonna do this all the way around and then I'm gonna bring you back okay and I'm coming to the home stretch here so I just want to remind you reiterate something from the last finish about coming to the edge of the tape that you're gonna to need to fold it over so that raw edge on your bi your uh, binding isn't gonna show. So I'm just coming to the end here. I already clipped it. I clipped it just a little bit longer than the distance it would have been for it to meet, right? If it was meeting, I would have cut it right here. 
but I cut it a little bit further so I could hide it. I want to hide that edge so it looks perfect. So I'm coming to the edge and I'm going to fold this under. I'll press that later. See where I'm going with that? And last few stitches. I'll come up here. I'll come back down here a couple times just to secure it. Because remember when I did it with the machine, I did backspace. So I'm going to do human backspace here. All right. I always do a double knot just to be sure. Oop. Good enough. There we go. So we've got the tape all the way around. Whew. My eyes don't work. My hands don't work. All right. We got the tape all the way around on this guy. So our next thing is going to be to trim. I'm going to trim it right down. Again, if you are a person who worries about details, uh, I'm not going to say OCD because that's not fair. Everybody has different quirks. Then you might want to, you know, I don't know, finish, finish these edges on your machine. I can't recommend doing that because again, you're going to immediately get tucked and secured. Um, time to sharpen the old scissors, man. Trim right down the edges. I'm going to take a little bit off at the corners too. I just want to get the excess out of the way because we, as much as I like excess, not not with backing. All right, so there we go. So what I'm going to be doing next is folding the tape over just like with the other finish with folding the linen I'm folding this over and I'm just going to sew it down right it's as easy as that I literally I've got this shorter than the other one so it's not going to bother or interfere I'm going to press it like this right so my loops are right there you're not going to be able to see it on the front I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to sew it all the way around same as the other one I'll come right back to you with that. I'm putting the iron on. Okay, so I am working on this finish here. I've got my tape behind. I'm going to cut it down to a one ply. I've pinned my little corner in place here because um, that is the, I'm not going to lie to you, this is the trickiest part of the whole thing is getting your corner in place. And I'm going to push and pull until it's just right. Pretty squared. It can be super frustrating. This is This is the part of the project, the corner thing that makes me feel like I need to not just give up, but actually set the thing on fire or drive over it in the driveway or something like that. And I like to do a few securing stitches here. You know, I can come back to it later. But right now I'm running around the edge and I want to be sure that this corner is good. There's a, one little trick I want to show you. Yeah, even with my glasses on, I can't see where my thread is. just want to do a two-ply. Just securing this a little bit here. Come shooting back up here. And I'm going to keep running along. Make sure this is in the picture. Yeah. Good. So one thing about this finish is I do not want the tape to show at all, right? This is a real easy finish. This is a good beginner finish. But as you go, you, you want to make sure that your loops are standing up and you're pushing this back and away in this direction, right? You want to push it, nudge it a little bit, catch uh, the backs of hoops that help it to slide backward because you do not want to see the edge of your binding tape on the front. Not for this finish. We want this to be invisible, right? We want this finish to look like this one, right, on this older rug. This was actually sewn first, I can tell, because I can see part of the inside. I can tell it was sewn and flipped. But as far as having the majority of the binding there and the majority of the binding here, it's going to look the same in the end. So I'm going to keep going with this. Again, nudging it forward as I go. I'm not going to do the whole thing here because I want to show you two more that are very different. But I am literally catching the back of a loop occasionally catching myself under the fingernail too, pushing back as I go. And the front is going to be super, super, super clean, super clean, right? Super clean, really, really sharp. So 
I would do that the whole way around for this finish. Where, where are you? There you are. I'm going to go right around with this finish and then I'm going to be pressing it again. I'm going to be pressing it on the back, making sure it's happy my iron's not on. This is where I joined it, so that's a good clean join. There's nothing showing there. And I'm going to be pressing it here so that it relaxes a bit more. And you're not going to see anything of the back on the front. You are just going to see, obviously these are the parts that are unfinished. So those are going to get tucked too. Those are going to get tucked back, but you can see how it's important with this finish. To t you don't want to tuck them so that they're a little bit like that. And you can see you've got to, as you sew, push them way back. And then once they're way back, you can hit this with the iron again and blo re-block it. I did a video earlier about blocking wet cloth, steam, steam, steam. Re-block it again. Everything relaxes. But what you're getting is this really sharp edge, right? Not that dissimilar from our edge we did here. Just this one is just folded over and sewn down. This one has a tape sewn around it and it's sewn down. These are both super, super easy finishes. Look, let's look at one now that's a little bit more complicated, but still very easy. Okay, so on to the next binding. This is going to be the whip stitch binding with wool. Okay, I have seen people do this with wool strips, but it looks a bit messier. Different look, different look, no judgment, just a different look. This is a very clean, straightforward, easy look. Um, if you think that folding in corners and tucking all the little ends and hiding them is fiddly, I think um, finishing with wool strips is fiddly, very fiddly. So I like to finish with the wool, and I've already picked out this rose color to finish up Donkey and Elephant, still there. Um, so I'm gonna introduce another thing with this finish we do not use the binding tape bias tape um, whatever twill tape whatever you call it the cotton tape we're not using we're using cording now cording is just called cording it comes fancy it comes recycled it comes not it looks like rolled up batting inside a little fishing net it's cording right this is wound into a ball this is a thicker cording I'm going to use a thicker cording on here so that we can see well but there's lots of different weights of cording and you know, if, you're, if you've done a thick rug or a high pile kind of thing, you want to use the thicker the better. It's up to you, it's a choice thing. Because at the end of the day, this is what I'm going to be doing with the cording. I'm going to do it right here to show you. It's going to be wrapped around here. So I'm measuring it this way. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not overly precise with anything, but thank God and God willing, things usually come out pretty good. This is the same concept as the bias tape. So I'm going to leave a little bit of extra again, about an inch. Boy, these scissors have had it, man. All right, so the cording goes away for the time being. The next thing I need to do to prep for this finish is I am going to be, I might decide to trim this. You know, I think I will decide to trim this, and I'm going to show you why. This is, a, this is going to be a, one of these personal choice things. The cording is going to go here. The next thing that I'm going to do is wrap the edges around it and baste it down to get ready to cord it. To me, that's gonna that's a little bit too puffy for me. So what I'm gonna do is get out the scissors. I wanna be sure I have enough to wind it a little bit. I want something like that. So what does that look like? So I'm only cutting off less than an inch, but it's gonna for me it's gonna make a difference. So I'm just gonna get right in there. Be bold, right? Be bold or go home. I don't know if that's even a thing, but I'm just gonna cut around the edge. And while we're doing this, I just wanna remind you and say to you, do not be defeated by this part of the project. If you, if this is the first time you finished your rugs, just know that you are in a class with 99.99% .99 of other rug hookers who do the fun part, which is the hooking, and then leave it and either never or you know a decade later that looks pretty close actually come back to the finishing part it's definitely too big so just know um a lot of people put this off not because it's difficult because it's annoying you know it can be annoying this is a very sort of methodical part of the project but do not be defeated by this part the binding part because whichever binding you choose you have done the hard part you have finished the hard part this is the quick part in comparison 
So let me see if this works any better. I'm trying my cord out at the bottom left. I'm going to wrap it. Yeah, that looks better to me. So now I've got my needle. I'm going to come up here. I don't need to really start from the back. It's not going to show anyway. I'm going to get the first stitch in, and then I'm going to go to... I, I don't know what it is about me. I have this crazy thing about one ply. I don't know if I'm constantly in scarcity mode or if I'm, it says something about my character, but what I'm going to do here is tuck as I go. It works better if you hold it in your hand. I'm rolling it right to the edge, and I'm tucking and catching the edge of my rolled up little sausage here with the cording inside. Just realized I have the fan on. Let me just shut that off. Okay. I just said to myself, don't say rolled up little sausage again, but I did. So tucking it in real tight, squeezing that right in there, I am stabbing the needle into the back, the crack right behind the, the uh, finished border and the edge of the roll and stitching them together. That was just fluff. So I'm gonna come up like this. Again, um, you know, the cord is so, uh, not wiggly, but it's so pliable, it wants to um, come up with you. So it's easier to pull it up off the table for me and stitch it around. You can see it is compliant. It does want to stay in place. So now I'm gonna be coming around this corner and we know corners are ready. Should have cut some of this corner off already. See, this is just who I am, right? If I didn't forget to cut the corner, it wouldn't be me. I'm just cutting a little excess off the corner and tucking. I want the corner to look good too, so I'm going to pay attention to the way it looks. I don't want it to be in there too tight, but I don't want it to have its way either. Sometimes I just put a little knot into the corner just as a placeholder. Okay. There. I'm coming around here now. This is my mug's cloth. Let's see. I'm going to wrap you, and I'm going to be real thoughtful about what I'm doing here. Get the wrap in there. Good. You're going to cover this wrap. Don't worry. It's not going to stand out. It's not going to ruin your life uh, in an hour. It's fine. I'm going to stitch this so that it's right up against here. You can see that's working out just fine. Okay. It's fiddly. You know, people don't always enjoy finishing their rugs because the fiddly factor is great, but um, it's not impossible. Sometimes I can't do push down, pull up on corners. Sometimes I have to go right through and come up again because I really don't want to move what looks to be perfect. Right, so that's looking pretty good to me. I got that corner in place. And now I'm tucking really hard to get that edge in. And I'm coming back through here. And I'm going to do this. That's maybe far. I'm going to do this all the way around. Oops, got caught on something. <gasps> Oh, I got, oh, because I started in the back. Well, you know what? I'm a ding-dong, but you knew that already. I'm just going to pull that tight. We're covering that anyway. You see, I pulled up my string because I came down the wrong side. Um, that's what you get when you fool around. It doesn't make any difference at all. None of this white little sausage roll is going to show. None of it. You're going to whip stitch over it with your wool, and it's going to be thick and gorgeous, and it's going to cover all of your sins of securing this little roll down. So I think this is pretty clear what I'm doing. I hope this is clear what I'm doing. Stitching into here, the little gap at the very, 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 very edge of your loops. I'm not going in between the loops. I'm stitching right at the bottom and I'm coming up on the edge of my little sausage roll. And not just on every corner, but often I just give it one really tight knot just to be sure, right? Maybe that's OCD. I do that just to be sure. But you can see, I'm going to go all the way around without you so I don't drive you nuts too late. But you can see that I've got this lined up in such a way that this is going to make a nice little corner. And I'm going to even have more choices about how that corner looks later when I start hitting it with my um, yarns. So I'm going to put you on pause and I'm going to come back to you when this edging is done. I just want to show you how this is turning out. It's a couple minutes later. 
and i realized i need to show you these two pieces overlapping i'm sorry about that major ding dong activity tonight i need to show you how those are going to wrap under there so i'm going to come to that but as you can see i'm just cruising around finished part here and i'm just tucking as i go i have my corners cut da, da, da. is it really me right and i'm tucking under as i go and i'm just going to keep doing this all the way around i just wanted to show you how it's coming out this is fiddly it's coming out like a little pastry crust or something, right? I must be hungry, all these food uh, meta metaphors or whatever they are. Um, I'm gonna need to block this again too, but the, this part is coming out great. I'm just gonna go around this edge and I'm gonna do the joining for you here, and then we're gonna whip it. Now I wanna show you something um, stupid and ugly that I did, just because it's worth showing. So on this corner here that I had just trimmed, I did my corner too close to the edge. I do that sometimes. You can see I'm not overly precise. But, you know, I'm not going to cry myself to sleep about it. If I do cry myself to sleep, it's going to be about something worthwhile and not the binding on this thing. Hopefully not at all. But I came too close and I was having too many little frayed bits. So I just did what I did on the other corner and I just whipped the thing around the edge to try to contain them. It's not going to matter at all. It's not going to matter at all when that wool is wrapped around the edges. Not, not at all. That's even the overstating it. So I did that as damage control so it doesn't fray anymore and it's not going to show. And I'm just making the point that when you do these things, do not go to pieces. Do not second guess yourself. Do not second guess whether you should be rug hooking or finishing your own rugs. These things happen to everybody and they always will because Murphy's Law prevails and he is always watching. So I'm going to continue doing this and it's going to be just fine. You're going to see it's going to be fine. And I just want to put it out there that what you're seeing me do here, this way of stitching in and coming up right under the loops is a way of doing it, right? I'm stitching straight down, but you can also, if it's more comfortable for you, do it the way I was doing it on the corners that I cocked right up, like this all the way around. You can also whip it real good sorry I had to say it all the way around right it doesn't matter if these are even at this point I'm just securing the little sausage roll so if you're happier I gotta make them not bulge out too much that's the thing about this is they can bulge try to keep them a little bit even your stitching after this your um, wrapping is gonna hide all that but if you're happier doing this around than this it doesn't make any difference now I don't know if you noticed but we're now at the point where those two ends are meeting. They're wrapped in here. So I'm gonna give it an extra tight tug and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and I'm, I'm gonna keep doing it the way that I'm used to doing it. But you do it one of those two ways. As long as that roll gets attached to the backing fabric right immediately next to the loops, then you've succeeded in this step. Oop. making sure that's tight. This is like the finish line right here. This hasn't taken very long either. It's, it's a very small piece. Oh, oh, I knew I was going to do that. Let's see if I can get this back in. The good thing about the upholstery thread is it's fairly, oh, I think I had it and I lost it. Thick. These are like number four uh, reading glasses too. All right, right to the end here. And I have been tying knots here and there just to keep it together. I think that's probably good. I'm gonna come up right here into itself and I'm gonna attempt to tie one more knot. And I'm gonna do a double knot. Why not, right? Why not, get it? Oh dear. All right, so there we have our little pastry all done corners ready to go so at this point we are doing the whipped edges and I've already chosen my colors I'm gonna do two colors and I decided um, to switch them out I'm gonna do I couldn't decide between the wine no that was an easy decision I couldn't decide between the rose color and the blue color for this piece so I'm gonna do both so I'm gonna be right back to you the camera's malfunctioning so I want to remind you, so far we've done two finishes. This is our third finish that we've done together. And this is going to be the one that involves the wool.
for the first finish that involved the binding tape, bias tape, cotton tape, twill, the tape, my supply list was tape, scissors, a needle, and heavyweight thread. Okay? That's complete list. Complete list for this finish with your yarn, the yarn of your choice to whip, is yarn, needle with a hole that's big enough to put the yarn through, right? Because it's not going to be this needle anymore. That's over. It's going to be, uh, for me, this giant needle. Uh, sometimes leather needles are good. As long as it has a giant eye for you to put your thicker yarn through, right? And you know this trick with the thicker yarn. You kind of unravel it a little bit and make it flat, and then you can squeeze it through better. It comes right through. When I'm working like this, just so you know, it's up to you. Sometimes the question comes up, do I cut my yarn? Uh, when, you're, when you're hooking with yarn and when you're finishing with yarn, it's up to you. It doesn't matter. I don't until I need to. Um, but I have a huge stain going there, too, and I'm going to change colors. I think I'm going to just cut a bit off. Went back on what I said. But I am going to switch out colors, and I don't want this to last for eternity. So I'm going to get going with this. I have got a strong piece of the yarn of my choice. I'm going to come up right in the gap where I attached the little sausage to the backing fabric. I do not have a knot. I'm actually going to do this just to catch it. I'm going to do it this way. I just want to catch it. I'm going to put it right next to there and you see how I caught that little tail. I'm going to come up pretty much in the next hole again in between and with my finger I'm going to kind of force the first one is going to get hidden. I'm going to push it a little bit to the right. I'm going to hide my tail here with my finger and I'm going to really manipulate it. This is going to be second nature in a minute. Coming up right next to the last hole and with this finger I'm going to manipulate where I want this to go. Okay, So I've got three little guys in a row here. One is the tail caught up under. Again, I'm coming up right between where I stitched before. And at a certain point, you don't really have to guide it much anymore. Your hand kind of figures out what it's doing. Your brain remembers. And one of the beautiful things about this part of the project is a few things. If you accidentally get one in the wrong place and there's a little gap showing, you can go back and fix that. It's, it, it doesn't matter. You can go back and fix it. It's better if you don't. It's cleaner, easier, faster if you don't. Um, but, you know, nobody means to make mistakes and mistakes happen. So I'm going to keep wrapping it. I'm right to the end of my tail there. And I'm trying to be pretty uniform with where I come up just so this yarn, which isn't insanely thick, lays next to each other, right? So what I've got now is the beginning. You can see it's going to look like this all the way around except I'm switching to blue. Now, it's coming up right in between the edge of my loops and where I attached um, the cord, where I hid the cord with my stitches. So I am literally going to go around the whole thing like this. And sorry, I forgot about the beautiful things. One of the other beautiful things about this stage of the thing is that as you go around, you, can, you hide your mistakes, you can fix mistakes later and the most important thing is when you look at the way that it came out there's some lumpy bumpies right there's some super lumpy bumpies it's just like life right lumpy bumpies all over the place some some areas are super smooth and then others have lumpy bumpies as I go along with this if I pull harder it tightens the lumpy bumpy so I end up with super uniform stitches coming around the corner I'm, see where, I'm tightening where I feel like there's a, a lumpy bump. 
but on the corners where I pulled really tight, I'm doing it a little bit looser because I want the edges to be pretty even. And I'm being real careful on the corners about how that yarn will lay. I want every piece to lay right immediately next to the piece next to it. I don't want any big white gaps showing of the binding. And this is something you can control. It's also entirely possible if you feel you've done something horrific that you just pull the yarn out of the needle, take it out, and backtrack a few stitches. Just pull it out and try again. But you can see I have got great control. These stitches are coming out real even. They're right up to the edge of the loops. And I have great control going around. The back looks good too. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing until I change colors and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's basically what I just did, tucking a tail under. Now here, I didn't quite come up to the edge. I'm like one little monk's cloth row away from the edge. So I'm going to, instead of putting the needle right where the edge is, I'm going to put the needle a tad bit higher so that it meets the edge of my hooking. And now see I'm manipulating this a little bit because I want that to meet up. I can add a few more rounds here if I need to. The main thing is that no white is showing and I have complete control over that by pressing it down, adding a bit. Of course, the thicker your yarn, um, the easier it is to get coverage. This is kind of, this is definitely a bulky, but it's not like a crazy super bulky or anything like that. It's, it's on the worsted side of bulky. Um, but I still have a lot of control. And as I say, I can, I can go and hit it again if I want to. You saw how easy it was to hide that little tail. It's gonna be easy again to hide that little tail. Now the needle that I'm using is like a giant upholstery needle. And um, the reason I like it is it has that giant eye that I can put pretty much uh, a camel through, uh, but also it's dull, like the tip is dull. It's made dull. So I don't feel like it's shredding my loops or my backing if I accidentally snag something. It's not gonna shred anything. It's not a vicious tool. It's a dull tool. It's enough to go through the monk's cloth, of course, because your hook goes through the monk's cloth. And it's very good for holding um, thick yarn like this. It's not gonna do any damage. So that's what I like for this. Now I'm coming to the edge of my color. I'm gonna back up a little bit because I feel like I missed a spot there. Oh. Jocelyn, my daughter, thought I should wear this nail polish so that you could see my hands really well. I'm not turning into a vampire or the bride of Frankenstein or anything like that. It's not Halloween, but uh, I usually listen to what she says. She's usually right. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, yeah, I'll stop here. And I'm going to just lay this out. You see this little tail? I'll lay this along here. I'm going to get some blue. I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to use a little bit of it. Now you see before I did about a yard and it made this much. So in general, um, for, what's the measure? Something like one unit, one inch, you need 12 times more. Something like that uh, of yarn to finish. So of course it'll be different depending on the type of yarn and the thickness of the yarn. But in general, you know, your, your skeins of yarn are quite big. Like these ones I've wound are, even though they're super bulky, they're probably, let's say, 100 to 160 yards. So, you know, most skeins are gonna be enough yards, uh, yardage that you get plenty to finish your projects. I'm gonna come up over here now where I left off, but you know, I'm gonna go down in here first. I want to leave it's going to be a double tail I'm leaving this time while I blend these two colors so let's see I'm going to do that I'm going to come up right next to it again I'm going to be careful because I don't want to miss any spots Oop, came up in the same spot Murphy you got me there we go let's see if I can see that was the right spot that's the thing it's like battleship right got it all right let's check this one 
Oh man, I thought he was going to get me again. Okay, so now I'm going to come around. I want to be sure to pull this one real tight because I do not want that showing. Not real happy with that, I have to admit. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks too far over. So I'm going to come out. Those kinds of mistakes, fix them when you see them. If you don't see them and you need to fix them later, then it is what it is. But don't wait for later if you can fix them now. Coming back in here, round three. Is three a charm? Let's find out. Right up in here, you stinker. Yeah. And wrapping. Same as before, except I'm hiding two tails. Now you might think, oof, hiding two tails. That's going to be super bulky, isn't it? That's going to add a lot of lumpy bumpies. Well, you can see it doesn't. It really doesn't. All these materials are so um, accommodating. You know, I'm able to hide two tails just as well as one. I wouldn't want to have to hide 20 tails, but luckily I don't. Now, again, the finishes I'm, I'm showing you today are not the only finishes. There are super complicated finishes. There are multiple rows of whip, stitch, which, whip stitching uh, finishes on one piece. There is braiding combined with whipping uh, in you know, designs. There's all kinds of knotting. There's lots of things you can do. I'm just trying to show you the most simple ones for a beginner, the ones that I have found the most simple for a beginner. So I'm going to stop in a second because I'm right to the end of hiding these two pieces and I want to show you one more finish before I completely lose the light. So, so far I would say really good if I do say so myself. So it looks good on the front and the back. I have good control over this. It's not lumpy bumpies. It's really finishing itself off nicely. I have successfully moved um, between colors, right, the blue and the uh, pink. I've got them both in and I will probably switch them off intermittently as this piece evolves. And what I will do finishing this piece is just the same thing I have been doing. Just whipping around, making sure there's no white showing, staying real close to the piece, and just know for yourself that with this finish, number one, it's very durable. This is a great edge. If you are using this as a rug, this is a great edge. It's really strong. You, you've got your rug is wool, and you've got a wool edge. Um, that if you stub that a hundred times in the middle of the night, if the elephant stampede over it on the gates of the of the circus tent, it's going to be good. This is really really durable. Now when I finish this edge, it's somewhat heavy. I mean, it gives it form, it gives it shape, it gives it color, it reframes it, right? It just it frames it beautifully, depending on the colors that you choose, your taste. But I will, in the end, block it again, which means putting a damp cloth over it and putting the iron, steaming it, right, right through the damp cloth. I'm going to block the edges, too, just so they are perfectly flat. Sometimes as you go around your whipped piece, it looks like it's going great, you know? Everything is even, all the lumpy bumpies are out, everything is going great, and then suddenly it looks like, oh, why does that side look longer than the other? I know that this pattern is perfect. I know that it's perfect. Sometimes it's just the way that it goes with pulling and twisting and turning and stitching. And once you block it, once you start adding steam and heat, it becomes pliable and, and all those things come out. I, the rug that I just did as a commission, that giant whale thing, um, the edging looked like a mess and it was buckling like it was rippling because there was so much more material on the edges that it was rippling doing this kind of thing and I thought oh this is awful what have I done now and I ended up steaming it and it was perfect it was perfectly flat it could not have been more perfect I was so relieved and so happy so the problems that you find while you're working with these finishes are things that you can control and proven. This is a very forgiving one, right? This, this to me is one of my favorites because you do have the opportunity to add color. It is extremely durable. It looks great on both sides, super finished, um, and it's very forgiving. Look at how pretty this looks in this corner, this edge, how perfect it looks in there. It's really, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, and I'm gonna show you one more. So the next one is gonna be a combination of, of ones that we've done already. We've basically done using the tape and just using whip stitch with wool. I'm gonna show you a combination of those things and let me get it set up, I'll come back.
So this last finish we're doing is a combo. It is using the binding tape, the tape, with the wool to whip stitch. And this is what I'm gonna do. It's a two-stepper and it's got shades of both techniques in it. I am going to start by sewing the binding tape back on because I don't have it on. That's why I'm doing this, I don't have it on. Remember that at the beginning of this video, the um, Halloween one I just did, the spooky head face thing, I put it on the machine, um, ran it under, and I had it sewn on. This I don't have sewn on yet, just like the last one I did with tape. So I have got to go around the edge and sew it on again. And again, I'm just doing a running stitch all the way around. One ply, real easy. And I'm gonna do this all the way around and I'm gonna come right back to you. Now with this one, I wanted to show you just for the sake of it that I did the corner differently. Instead of doing the folded corner like I normally do, like that, I did this, this kind of corner, which you also see. I literally just kept going with it flat. And of course it stands up like that because that's what you're forcing it to do. If you are gonna do that kind of corner, you really, there's not a lot of reallys with me, but you really need to make sure that it is, first of all, that your needle is threaded and then that your corners are right, right down. And what I do is I get under the edge of the corner, like right at the edge of the tape, and I really force it right into that corner. The corner needs to be at the corner exactly. Put some extra stitches directly in, and then you're gonna ease it. Easing is always, um, ironically, hard. I'm gonna ease it around the edge and just make sure that it is perfectly meeting the edge of the loops where the loops are beginning. Okay, let me show you that. So I've got it, I'm gonna pull this tight. I've got that one there too. It's right there on the edge, but you've really got to get those stitches right into the edge. I don't think that um, either of these ways of folding it down or having it stand up as you run around the edges is particularly better than the other. I don't really have a preference. I just, my hand starts doing what it does and then I just go with it. It's like um, an Alfred Hitchcock, you know, late night thing. I, I don't really know what the hand is doing until it does it. And I just go with it because both of these things are equal and they're fine. There's really no drawback or benefit to either one. It depends um, on how you feel. This is a little bit easier to sew, but then if it's a hair easier to sew, it's also a hair easier to, to flip around the back. So it's practice as you go. And I'm gonna finish stitching this and then come back to you, but I just want to make the point again that if you're doing this and you make a mistake, if you're doing this, you don't like the way it comes out, if you're doing this, it's not perfect, worst case scenario, you pull it out. It's just a running stitch. You just pull it out like a basting stitch and, and do it later, another time, another season, another year, when your head has the space and the capacity to deal with frustration better, do it then. But the worst thing that can happen is you frustrate yourself and it doesn't come out the way you want. Um, the best thing that can happen is that you, you've done a binding and you're ready to hang it up on the wall or put it on the table for the teapot or on the floor or whatever. So um, don't be hard on yourself when you do this. It, there's a learning curve like there is with everything, but it's not a huge learning curve with any of these, these techniques that I'm showing you right now. That's why we're doing them first. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm getting to the edge of my whipping here. My Sorry, my running stitch to attach the tape right along the loops. And I just want to remind you, because our last thing was wool, I want to remind you with the tape, it's real important to tuck the edge under so you have a nice finished edge. That's real important. So I'm going to hold that down with my finger and I'm going to finish my stitching right along the edge. Secure that, I'll do my human back stitch there. Just back it up, make sure it's good. And then I'm gonna knot it down. And that went right the way around with our little edge tucked under and all hidden. I'm gonna double knot it. All right, 
So the idea with this finish is, hey, look, we've got our we've got our tape on. So yeah, we could do a finish like this finish. Remember this one? Just with the edges secured down, stitching as we go, pushing and stitching. We could do that one, but we're gonna do something different this time. I'm going to put the, I'm going to use the bias tape to fold under like that, and then I'm gonna whip stitch the bias tape. And with this version, right, I've rolled it up with the cord. The cord is making the filling, the stuffing here. Um, sorry about that. And I'm gonna shut the fan off. So the cord makes it have a bulkiness, a fullness to it. What I'm doing here with the bias tape is going to be a little bit flatter. So my finish, once I fold this under, we're going to do that together. And I'm going to whip stitch around the edges. My finish is going to be a little bit flatter. And it will probably, because this will be flat, it will probably only rise to meet the edge of the loops. Whereas this rise is a bit higher. So these, these finishes will look different. So <clears throat> this is going to be our fourth and final. So what I'm going to do next is some of my indiscriminate cutting of the backing because I don't want too much backing in there. And be more careful on the corners this time, not be such a doodle bug. Cutting as I go. Be bad to cut that tape now that it's all still sewn on, huh? Uh-oh, don't listen, Murphy. Don't listen. Cutting right around because I want it to be less less uh, thick, less of it than the tape, than the binding. There we go. Forget about you a little bit. So my next thing that I'm going to do is going to be flip it over, right? I'm going to flip this on this side, and I'm going to stitch this down. Not all the way because I want it I want it to be about even on both sides. Now, had I finished this differently, not with a running stitch, but in a better way, it uh, in a more uh, polished way or in a machine way, it would look like the other rug that I showed you earlier. I'm going to show you that. Let me show you that right now before we forget. Remember this rug, you can see the binding on both sides, right? It's meant to be seen. With this, if I folded it back over and I stitched it, so half was in the front, half was in the back, and this looked better, it wasn't a running stitch that I just did by hand, all willy-nilly, if I made that look nice, then this would look like more like that, right? You would be able to see the edge and the tape would be the finished look. Now, in general, tape is not a super nice finished look, not just because I have a hand stitch in there, um, you know, it's, it's, it's cotton tape. Uh, it's a preference thing, not judging, but, um, you know, I think it's going to look nicer when we whip stitch over it. So I'm going to flip it back around, start securing it. I'll meet you back and we're going to start whip stitching over this, our last piece. Now I've got this flipped over and I'm going to secure it about halvesy halvesies. Okay. Actually, I think I'm going to make it even less, right? I could have used my thinner tape, but I probably should have if I'd been thinking. This is much thinner than this. Look at this. My brain wasn't working. It never, never really did, is working. But that would have been a better move. So what I'm going to do, I could do halfsies, halfsies if you want a big border like that. I want a little bit of a smaller border because it's just a smaller piece. So I'm going to tuck it a little bit. No, I'm not. I'm going to do halfsy halfsies. I think that looks nice. I'm going to go whole hog. So I'm just going to flip it back like this and I can feel with my hand where it is in the front and I'm just going to start a running stitch. I do my two ply thing, my one ply, cut it down. I can feel it with my finger, but I also know on the back that it's meeting that line of my loop. So this one's going to be doing the same thing. So I'm just doing an identical running, uh, sorry, yeah, like a run, not a running stitch, a whip stitch, I'm just securing it as I go. And again, remember with this kind of finish that the finished yarn, as you're wrapping it, you can really control how tight, how thin, if you want to change lumpy bumpies, if you want to change the shape of stuff, I promise that's the last time I say lumpy bumpy. 
So now I'm coming to the corner. I'm not gonna do this whole row because I'm losing light a little bit. Four finishes was a lot after a day of running kids around and getting sucked into going to the um, game store and everything for some junk. So I started a little bit late. Come into the corner and I just wanna make sure, I like to do my knots as I go just to be sure. It's not like it would come unraveling like a sweater, but um, I feel like that might be too long. See how that one is a little bit long? Like when I tuck it back, you can still kind of see it. I think it's right on the cusp, so I'm gonna let it go because it's it's still it's still more narrow than the tape, but I wish I would have done it a little bit less. So be anticipating how you want your corner to go here. I'm gonna just do a little tuck. Remember the corners and anything that involves ease is not easy. I'm gonna do something like this. Let me hold it in place with a pin so you can see what I mean. Fold it in on itself. And I'm going to stitch around it like that. Right. I'm going to hold that. It's fiddly. Don't let anybody tell you it's not fiddly. It's super fiddly. But it's going to work out. My little thing went away, but that's all right. I can recreate that kind of magic right that's why I like to attach these two sides like this like they're they're in a little kiss right here because once I do that it's locked see what I'm doing there just getting those corners together and it's not going to be perfect and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be whipping over it just going to do a little bit here because I think we're going to get the point rather quickly. This is this is reminiscent of two earlier techniques. And this one is not harder. This is no harder than the past ones we've done. It's not like I'm building in terms of difficulty. I'm not at all. It's just this shows elements of two others, so it makes sense to do this one last because you're familiar with the terms, you know, of using the binding versus using the cording and using the whip stitching versus just sewing it over and hiding the edges. So let me just come around here, and I think that'll do us. So, and, and um, I didn't say, but I am using my regular needle again, my little chenille needle with, you know, a fairly sharp tip, not a crazy sharp tip, but a fairly sharp tip, because I'm actually doing sewing here. Uh, and I could use that smaller head, the smaller eye, uh, because I was using my upholstery thread again. There is rug making thread, I think I said that, upholstery thread. It's just heavy duty is what you want. So we got this corner ready to go. Um, I can see already that well, part of it's an optical illusion because this part's not done. I'm just going to stitch this corner. Let's see here. Um, I can see already there's some pull and there's some give and it looks a little bit uneven. So that's stuff that we want to fix with our yarn. So now I'm going to pick my yarn. It's getting to be nighttime. I have the lights on. Um, I think I'm going to go for, I was choosing between these. That one's maybe got too much purple because this has got none. Um, so then I'm down to green, mottled green. I think I'm going to do the mottled green instead of the straight green. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this off. And here is my big, oh, he's still attached to the other friend. Here's my big one here, my big needle with a giant eye. Gonna just get this threaded again. And I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing that I did with this technique, except again, instead of having made a little uh, channel for the cording, and wrapped up a piece of cording. This is qu quite a bit flatter, and I'm just gonna whip stitch over my um, binding tape. Did it again. Just gonna leave a little bit of this to hide the tail. I like to hide the tail forward. Everybody has their own technique for these kinds of little things, and you'll probably find yours. You might forget what mine was and, and just start doing your own. But basically what I'm doing here is I am sewing exactly the same way I did with the last technique. And you ease it as you go, right? It's still, you can ease the one before it too. 
I'm just stitching right between the edge of the loops and the little channel that I folded over of the binding tape. And I'm arranging every uh, time I go around, I'm every turn, every loop, I'm arranging. And I can pull tighter or less tight. It's going to be up to me because I'm completely controlling it. I could I could make it quite tight, and it would it would roll up like a little centipede into a little little ball, you know, just real tight. But I'm keeping it similar to the size of the um, edge itself because I was going to go thin, and then I I didn't. I ended up going bigger because I just felt like it looked nicer somehow. Got my color changing green going, and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just stitching in fooling with every loop as it comes up. And pulling back in close to my row of loops. And that's the part that you need to worry about. You don't want any white showing in there. You have to go back and fill it in. It's not the end of the world, but it's just easier to do it in one fail swoop. So this is what I'm doing, same as before. It's not worth doing too much of this technique. I'll head toward the corner a little bit, but it's not worth doing too much because it's exactly the same as the last technique, except with this technique, I have not used cording. I have just used the binding tape and a needle and, a, and um, the wool. I have not used cord. So if you like the way it looks with the whip stitch, but you don't want to deal with looking for cording and you're going to second guess yourself, did I get the right cording? Did I not get the right cording? Know that you can do this very same technique just with your tape, with the um, binding tape, the bias stuff. And this is not bias tape, like bias tape for um, clothing, right? This is just like a cotton twill tape. Rug hooking stores will have it. Search rug hooking if you're second guessing yourself. It's like a cotton twill. Looks like a little seat belt. And again, they have it in different sizes. They all look like little seat belts. So I'm coming around this corner here. This is a tough design because it's got a lot of diagonals that end on the edges, but that's a good reason to do this finish because I can hide them and I can trim them later and I'm going to block it again too. I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to want to hide this little tail. So you can see with this finish, it's the same as this finish, but it's going to be much flatter because this one has the cord inside of it. And this one is just the tape folded over and then you going around and around and around the tape. It's going to give the same effect. So to wrap this long video up, but I mean, hey, four finishes, four finishes in one video is a lot, but these are all simple ones. And again, if you're a beginner and you're struggling with this and how to get started, I, I want you to know that it's very simple materials. It's very simple work. The frustration factor is there. But you can do this. And if you don't feel like this is something you want to do now, then keep working on your hooking and finish this later. I read in a book, um, I'm going to have to do a review on it. I forget what one it was, but I loved it so much. The woman was so um, charismatic and funny in her writing. And she said something like, there's one month, like November or something that she calls Fifi month. And it means find it, finish it. If you save all your stuff for your own Fifi month, because you don't have the um, emotional capacity to deal with learning something like this, now and you just want to focus on hooking and getting better at hooking then leave this for later that's fine you know do fifi but if you want to start learning how to finish stuff i'm going to remind you what our finishes were today our simplest one i think was just folding material back pressing it and sewing it down that's just a folded edge and it came out really good very sharp nothing wrong with that our second finish was the tape. We sewed the tape all around. That's our thread. And we pulled it backward. We kind of eased it so it stayed away from view. And we sewed it down. Okay? The corners vexed us on everything we do, and they always will. Nothing to be done about that. Just pressing. Just pressing. So this is the fold over with the tape. And then we did the 
put the cord around the edge, wrap and sew the cord in place, and then whip stitch all around the edge. Once the cord is all covered up like a little sausage, I said I wasn't gonna say that, inside. And our last thing was our combo. We sewed on the tape, we wrapped it around the back, we folded it, stitched it in place, half and half in this case, and then we whip, whip stitched all the way around. We didn't, we didn't do that, we're just doing this video, but you can see, if I were to continue this, that the whole thing would be green. So that's the way it goes. These are our four finishes for now. I'm gonna say it one more time, there's lots of finishes. The other finishes I think are harder. I feel like these finishes are easier. Um, you gotta do what's right for you. You gotta do, you gotta make your piece look the way you want it to look. Um, I think this is a really good start. These are all um, relatively easy, very easy to um, pretty easy. None of these are impossible. I think anybody can do these. If you have any questions or comments, um, please write them in here. And um, again, there are other finishes. If you have comments like, I would like to see a braided finish. I would like to see a braided um, velvet finish. I would like to see a combo of finishes. We can do those later. But right now I'm trying to uh, cater to beginners because there's so many beginners in the group. And I still feel like a beginner too, even though I started this like, 10, 15 years ago, I stopped for a long time because I was living abroad and it was not easy to get rug hooking equipment in Amsterdam. So it's just not a thing there. Um, so I'm back to it like with, with a fury and a passion, um, but I'm doing things as I go too. And I think it makes it easy for me to explain things to you that I'm, I've relearned everything. So recently it's fresh in my head. It's not second nature. Everything I do, I have to think about and everything is right in the front of my head because I'm remembering it and relearning it from years ago. So to me, these are the four simplest finishes that there are, um, but feel free to give suggestions for other ones. And definitely, if you have it in you to start this, this is not hard, give it a try. Choose your either your tape, uh, needle and thread, or your, your wool, needle and thread. I can tell you where to get this wool. This is mine, I make tons of it and I sell it, not expensive. Um, but there's lots of other people who make it too and i can steer you toward exactly what you want if you're having trouble figuring out whether what you're finding is what you want a lot of things you can get just at a yarn store like bulky you know, anything bulky or super bulky that's going to work for you for your finish particularly if it's all wool particularly if it's on the floor uh, and you need it to be all wool and durable not like a mix but um send any questions or comments my way and i hope this was a helpful video i hope it was not overwhelming and i will see you soon